I think it's very, very important for us to acknowledge that when people come to the center, first time, second time, third time, whenever, they come face to face with new realities, new ideas, new concepts, new applications, new implications that challenge things they've thought about before. And one of the things we continually hear from students is that they, they get this emotional claw that comes up for them when they're faced with all of that. And they struggle with how to take it back home, how to introduce it to their staff, introduce it to their patients, implement it in a reasonable way. And I'd like to take this opportunity to pick your brains about what you've experienced and any thoughts or ideas you have for our students about how they can approach this process of integration in a way that doesn't make them cuckoo. Well, there's no question, <clears throat> as mentors and CIs, we have to deal with and we will be approached by somebody who has either a, a feeling of inadequacy or a strong emotional um, problem with uh, something that's not going right in their implementation. Um, there's really, there really is some risk to pursuing excellence because you're around people that are, in your eyes, a lot better than you mm -hmm. and uh, you have to come to grips with, uh, with your own uh, persona and able to accept that information, uh, you know, accept it in a positive way and uh, not feel bad. Um, you know, in my own community, people look at me and say, oh, he's a great dentist. And I always think, well, yeah, but I go to, when I go to the Koi Center and sit in that room with uh, all the other people, I'm like the junior dentist in there, you know. So it's um, as you deal with that and as you deal with the financial burden of uh, coming to the center, if you, whether you come from a distance or you don't come from a distance, it's a big financial commitment. Um, you have to be away from your family while you're out there. It's a big time commitment. And then there's the whole struggle of implementation when you go back, and that's why we as mentors and CIs uh, can be really helpful because each one of those problems carries an emotional toll. All right, so let's eliminate the things that you've come up with. Number one is making the commitment <coughs> financial, emotional, personal, otherwise. Mm -hmm. The second one is, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this when I'm watching John demonstrate it and it looks so seamless, but ooh, I can't do this. The other part of it is something that Nancy's demonstrated to us before. It's, I, I can do this, but what does that mean about what I did before? Mm -hmm. So take us there, if you will. Well, um, in that case, it's, it's like any kind of learning or growth. It, you only can uh, do, do what you're doing with the information that you have. And every, every, it's, a, it's just a, um, a reality that people realize that you're, uh, even when you see a physician, they may come up with a different medication that uh, they didn't have at their disposal last time. So it's just important to articulate that. Take a deep breath, not feel panicked, not feel like you're inadequate. Uh, realize that your patients are coming there because they trust you mm -hmm. and have faith in you and be honest. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it also is helpful after a class to, um, if you're on a plane, or that evening, try to, die, try to write con concisely down a, a plan. And then I think it's really important to have a two or three hour meeting as soon as you get home with your staff. All right, and what would you include in that meeting? What kind of things you think the students should include? I would say if it was treatment planning, how we're uh, going to, um, uh, it might be even from the very beginning, how we answer the phone, how when we bring a patient in, what we do for uh, records, uh, then um, how we then uh, do a treatment planning presentation afterwards. Uh, just take it in small bites. And then as far as staff support, there's a, um, the um, modules mm -hmm. slow, uh, that they could watch as, as supportive because some people learn best by listening, some by watching, and some by actual hands-on experience. Sit down with your staff and, and, and say, well, this is how you take pictures. Mm -hmm. This is what they look like. But not try to do too much too fast. Phase it much like we do with patients. If we over without well them with the treatment plan, that's right. too much to take at one time as well. So Chris, I, playing off of what Nancy has said, I hear a lot of students get frustrated because they go home with this wealth of information and they try to implement it all at once, all at the same time. How did you choose where to prioritize your first steps in general? Well, as a general practitioner, not everybody in my practice needs full mouth reconstructions. Uh, you do have some more difficult cases and you have to choose those to do the full workups on. 
That's how I integrated and talked about the process. I was constantly, after I came back from classes, probably like a recording machine because as I was doing exams or even periodic exams in the hygiene room, I was talking about you know, wear on teeth, what that may mean, and just constantly verbalizing uh, the courses to my staff so that they could hear the repetition of what my thought processes were so that by a certain time I could almost hear the hygienists in their room discussing exactly what I was saying for the for the last month and so it was that was one subtle way of integrating it into uh, the practice but there are those cases where you just have to decide this is one that's going to do the full workup and then actually showing the staff you know what what the process is isn't this cool you can take this and then you can mount it up the platform and and that's the way that I integrated it into my practice mm -hmm. uh, because not everybody that walks into my practice needs a full workup every time we pick and choose the cases but we're consistent with it now right so so Jeff I'm curious if you can reflect a little bit on what Chris has said I think a lot of people feel that they have to go back and go through the 10 step process and e with every single patient when they've not done that with perhaps any patients in the past. How did you decide uh, how, how much to turn on the tap and how fast it should run? Well, I think it's different for everyone in their personality styles, but I think the point is that it's a process and, and some people will go through parts of the process faster than others. but it is a process and let's face it it's hard it's just not easy and that's why most people don't do it we've all talked about the dip and heard about the dip and John's discussed the dip many times before but the world counts on people that aren't going to go through the process that way when we do go through the process and we do make it through that hard part then we have reached a level that is higher than other people and we can demand more from our customers we can demand more and we are more valuable as a result of having gone through that hard part. But it's hard. And to answer your question, you have to start somewhere and you have to go through the process and you have to continue that process even after it gets hard. Specifically after it gets hard, you have to continue to push and continue to work and continue to drive and continue to go and move and do and get a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. The harder it gets, the harder you might have to work and progress until you get to that level where you've gone past that hard part and you've become, um, in the eyes of everyone else, an expert or um, better than the average person. Right. So, Doug, if, you're, if you choose to implement one particular component, what is it that you do to ensure that you keep yourself in the process of, an, of mastering, adding a new one, mastering, adding a new one. How, how do you govern yourself in that way? Well, I think what you have to do is, um, and what we do as CIs and mentors, I, I don't know where I heard it, but it was, it's someone's little tagline, but it says, we meet you where you are. And that is, you find out what's the next appropriate step for you. As Jeff alluded to, it's different for everybody. And so you find out, and you have to feel very comfortable and confident, and the mentors and CIs make you feel comfortable and confident that wherever you are in the process, whether it's buying a camera or whether it's doing a full, uh, full workup on each patient, and Dr. Coyce is very much about comprehensive assessment, but not necessarily full mouth you know, work. It's, yes. it's a comprehensive patient assessment. And so you can, you, you will gain confidence and you will gain strength knowing that you can select what to put together for the patient. But taking the next step for you and, and when you identify what that is and there's people around you to help you identify that, they, they comfort you in knowing that it's okay to feel like overwhelmed, there's too much. It's just identify that next step, implement it, and pretty soon it's like an onion. The layers just build, and uh, before you know it, you really have something that's uh, it's sort of transformation. Right. You said something almost subtly that I want to make sure we put out here as a big piece on our table here. Because I hear you making a big distinction between a comprehensive assessment, mm -hmm. evaluation, and a full mouth reconstruction case. And mm -hmm. I think that many people mm -hmm. think somehow the Kois method is to reconstruct everybody, mm -hmm. 28 teeth. And you've suggested, and I think all of you have men mentioned, that 
it's a comprehensive evaluation. It's a methodical mm -hmm. process Correct. by which we organize our thinking as we approach looking at a case to make sure that we understand the case fully, all the risk factors, and we can create a treatment plan that takes those into account, mm -hmm. whether the treatment plan is for a single tooth or whether the treatment plan is for something that's complete. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair enough distinction to it make? It is, in the exact same way that we make that assessment for the patient, there's people around that can help us make that assessment about our development in this system and help us take the, find that next step right. for us and, and take that next. I remember in one of the courses, and I'll be very brief, uh, Dr. Coy's prepped a whole upper arch and he took some provisionals and he said you just float them in the face and you seat them in there and you know and I had I thought a lot of experience and I said you got to be kidding me how you know a lot of people can't do that and I felt Float. overwhelmed and, and so and so then I then I you know consulted with some others and sure enough you know people will hold your hand and talk you through some of those concepts and so sometimes the perception is because if it's a vertical opening case and it's a lot of teeth that we're restoring all these you know full mouth cases and that's right. just simply not true Let's talk about really the, I think, that sort of ugly stepsister of all of this. And it's something that, Nancy, you personified in a previous training video, that you go home and you begin to question whether you've done your patients a disservice in the past. Because either you didn't know or you knew, but you didn't implement a very different approach that Dr. Coyce is now asking us to look at. H how do you manage that emotional stress that, that comes about? Well, I've experienced all, all of those things, the inadequacy, feeling inadequate, the, realizing that I've messed a lot of people up. I, I've experienced every one of those scenarios, <laughs> and I'm still experiencing them today. But I think the only way that you're going to get any meaningful change is to change yourself. You have to start somewhere and begin that process. And you know, who was it that said that uh, you need to become the change that you want to see in the world? Gandhi or Gandhi. someone like that. <laughs> Um, and so you just have to start somewhere and begin that process and as you learn and as you develop and as you make mistakes then you can alter that process and continue and move forward each time rather than getting stuck and worry about it and and have that mental and emotional anguish that Nancy portrayed um, over and over and over again expecting different results. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that there's a big difference between reflecting on what you've done in the past and saying you know I knew better, but I didn't, versus I wasn't entirely aware and now I am. Is that mm -hmm. a good distinction to make? I think it, it, the knowledge is empowering now mm -hmm. to know that what, the whole point is that you want to reduce the risk mm -hmm. for the patient. Right. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that this is what it takes to reduce the risk, you can start implementing that process mm -hmm. and, and move forward, but you have to like, Jeff said, you have to put a stake in the ground and move forward from that. What becomes sometimes difficult is when something that you did in years past now comes back and you look at it and go, Ooh, yeah, that's kind of probably because I didn't do this or that, that's why the case failed. And then there is a emotional struggle within us, I think, that we all go through. And there's no right or wrong answer on how you handle that. Mm -hmm. And you, all, you have to handle it to the, to the best you know, ability financially, emotionally, and, and everybody has that that balancing act in their life. But you, if you continue to go forward, even with the knowledge that you have and not, you know, better from it, then I think, what's the point? Yeah, I think that's a good point. That right now you're responsible to act on what you know. Mm -hmm. That you can't hold yourself accountable to whatever is going to be out there in the future. That's not part of your conscious awareness at this point mm -hmm. and to reflect on what you knew at the time you did it and to, to allow yourself a little grace here I mean mm -hmm. you know this learning process is a very important process it's very emotional for you mm -hmm. where you're taking uh, one uh, strategy of a clinical approach you're moving it <coughs> out of the way and putting a new one in that takes an emotional toll on people. It's financially uh, challenging, it's organizationally challenging, it challenges the structure and the staff and all of the systems mm -hmm. and, and sometimes even the physical plant that you put in place. Mm -hmm. And so to give yourself a little grace for acknowledging that you know, you're know you always doing the right thing based on what you know at the mm -hmm. time, be a little self-forgiving. and 
then keep yourself moving forward. Mm -hmm. The other thing uh, uh, to close is Dr. Coyes is also very transparent. He shows us cases where he did something, uh, and sometimes not that many years ago, and he says, this is how it looks now, and it's not always uh, how he wants it to be. So right. he lets us know that even in his development, he's, we're learning all the time, and um, that we're going to make mistakes, and, and, and it's okay. Right. All right. One other comment I just wanted to say. Let's be honest. Some of those people, many of them came in with the risk. We didn't know that. We knew in our gut that maybe there wasn't enough tooth structure to predictively restore, but we tried it anyways because the patient wanted us to. We didn't really know how to articulate that this is really a, a high-risk tooth. It may not work and share in that discussion with the patient. This gives us the tools. I think that yeah, that's, true. Uh, that's a little uh, uh, add-on, but it's a really yes. powerful one because if the person comes in with the risk and you don't increase the risk, mm -hmm. but you just aren't aware of the implications of the risk, that's mm -hmm. very different Sometimes than being aware of it and ignoring it. Mm -hmm. And what we hold ourselves accountable to as Coy Center students is is being holding ourselves accountable to honoring that risk, mm -hmm. taking that mm -hmm. into account, and making good judgments on the basis of that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't decrease the risk. Right. It's just there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, students are going to go through whatever process, but I hope that your experiences will help them to, to weather this a little bit, knowing that they're not alone, that those of you who are have reached a level of mastery, and you all at this table have, have experienced many of the same things and will experience it again because mm -hmm. it's always changing. Very Thank good. You. Thank you so much.